Wayne Barnes, your quickfire questions start now. Childhood hero. Oh my goodness, where did this one come from? Well, I was always like, I'll give a rugby one first of all. Um, I um, I was petrified of Martin Johnson, so yeah. um, I remember I even apologised to him when I simbined him in my first game with him. Did you really? Yeah, I said sorry, sir, and yellow carded him. Because um, <laughs> you you get. And what was his reaction? Um, he, well, he did stare and he, he swore, so I won't swear, but he said that's the only decision you've got right all day did he really <laughs> yeah, which Good i thought was brilliant um so from a rugby point of view you know because it was that iconic 2003 yeah. team um so i hated interviewing him as a junior reporter as well absolutely just, loathed it i can imagine yeah um but you get what, what happens is when you start off your career you um you get sent to places like walford road or king's Own, you know in a shed when when they're expected to win you know it yeah. should be like top versus bottom and it was so it was like 70 points to three at the time someone took a quick tap penalty <laughs> he smacked them after about 30 centimeters and i'm like oh my goodness i'm, I'm gonna, gonna have, have to i'm gonna have to sin bin martin johnson yeah. cbe uh so uh yeah one for the ages favorite ground um favorite ground so i i love i love the european scene um yeah. and um you know so clermont this weekend um toulouse um Ravenhill and uh, Toman Park, all of those kind of iconic kind of grounds around your Europe, but none better than the Principality, the Millennium Stadium. Such an amazing stadium. Walk down to the to the uh, to the um, to the stadium from the hotel room through through the streets of Cardiff, which are always you know thriving at that point. Roof shut, seventy eight thousand people singing hymns and harriers, the Welsh anthem. It's you know, and there's so many special games there from the 07 match to you know my hundredth match. There. I've got so many great memories of that game, uh, that stadium. Do you get nervous? What do you say to yourself twenty seconds before kickoff? Um, so I actually write reset on my hand, um, and that doesn't mean scrums because yeah. I know no one likes a reset scrum. Um, but every time I start thinking about things which are uh, di distract distractions, you know, so what's a player is going to think about that decision? What's a coach is, how's that going to look in review? Because that goes through your mind really? during a match. I look at that and you'll usually see me smile because I know I'm in that moment and yeah. then you get back to your decision making. So um, there'll be times when you're like, wow, this is noisy today or wow, I'm under pressure here. But as soon as you think about that, you're not thinking about your job. So quick look at hand, quick smile and move on. So you do, you do get nervous? You don't get nervous? Um, you feel the pressure, the eyeballs? Um, I, I probably, I'm a, I'm less, I, 30 seconds a minute before kickoff as you're standing in the tunnel and you're just a walk out. That's when the butterflies go, uh, you know, come. Um, you walk out, you take a deep breath. As soon as you blow the first whistle though, you, you're kind of in the swing of things and you don't have time to be nervous. But yeah, those last minutes before matches, you realise the enormity of it. Best player you have refereed? Um, I mentioned the one who I, I was probably most scared of was Johnson. The players that you, I, I, you kind of uh, talked about time and time again are the ones that there's a reason why they are talked about time and time again. So McCall, Pocock, John Schmidt. And they're also good leaders and good men as well. So, um, you know, and they weren't what I would call, you know, the, the loud, vociferous captains. They would be um, captains who led by example. So yeah. when they were in trouble, um, so whenever New Zealand were in trouble, McCall would go and find the ball and go up the guts of the opposition. When Australia were in trouble, you'd see Pocock over the ball getting a turnover. So they just led by example, but they were also just decent human beings. Um, and so, you know, those three really do jump out. You know, you probably then got the more up-to-date ones of people like Alan Wynn, you know, who, who do, you know, kind of um, just have a certain presence about them. Yeah. Best game you've refereed? You must get, do you get that else that quite a bit? Um, it? You do, and it kind of, it kind of evolves, um, you know, so you, you go most, most up to date, you have things like the, the third test between New Zealand and Ireland, which was, you know, it built the two, yeah. the two games in the lead up to it were special. This is the first, you know, first potential series win um, on Irish territory, uh, sorry, New Zealand territory. I was involved in Alliance twice, um, so 2009 and 21, they decided to have non-neutral refs for the um, the midweek stuff. They usually have neutral refs. Um, 09 was the first ever time that they'd done it. And so I refereed um, 
the Lions versus um, uh, the Orange Free State Cheetahs, um, Vodacom Cheetahs at, at Vodacom Park. Um, and that was special too. Yeah, you because know, you're people forget refs are actually rugby fans yep. as well. They they just think they're there to ruin their afternoon. <laughs> um, and everyone watching. Exactly. Um, so, you know, growing up watching the Lions, I think we all remember 90, I was at the university when the 97 Lions took place. Um, and you remember that I- iconic kind of tour. Um, and so then to be part of the Lions, you know, to to see the traveling fans, I still think that's, that's pretty special. Um, but my uh, favorite game, um, not an international game, and it wasn't too far from here, over at Barnes. London French versus Kilburn Cosmos. Sorry, what? London French versus Kilburn Cosmos. My first game I'd ever refereed without giving a single penalty. Wow. Yeah, so um, I um, I was meant to be refereed. Was that laissez-faire refing, or was that just two incredibly disciplined teams? A little bit of both. Right, <laughs> a little yeah. bit of both, a lot of communication. I was meant to be refereeing Racing versus Munster that weekend and it was the time when the French um, the, the, the Paris attacks took place yeah. um, so this would have been 2015 so my game got called off midweek so I rang the local referee society I, I, I live quite close to, to here I'm down in Twickenham Le- local referee society said can you go and referee a game for us I'm like yeah um, so it was Kilburn Cosmos versus London French at, in Barnes I got the bus there I got met by the president, um, refereed a game, zero penalty, greeted by the president, gave me a uh, a, um, a beret and a glass of Chablis <laughs> uh, as I was walking off the pitch. And um, and then I, I had to down a pint with the, the, the other men in the match because I got joint uh, player of the match for not giving a penalty. Quite right too. Yeah. I like that. Popping it back. Um, so I was going to say strangest place you've refereed. Would that be up there? Um, have, you ever, have you ever done a trip, you know, like a trip to the Arctic, or sometimes not, there are those extraordinary um, opportunities? Not, yeah, not 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 much rugby player in the Arctic, no. if I'm honest. But there is, um, but there is a, there is a tournament up there, isn't there? And there, wasn't there a didn't they, um, Lee Mears? Um, yeah, I remember. Yes, they, yes, they I, did. I was asked. Was, was that a wooden a, spoon a, thing? Was Everest? It? Wasn't it like the highest ever um, rugby right. game? Yeah, Forest of Dean's a pretty odd place. Yeah, that's um, very true. I'm from the Forest of Dean, so yeah. I can say that. Well, amazed you've only so, got four, five fingers. Oh, well, it one got removed when you leave. Yeah, exactly. Surgically removed. So there'll be some odd places there. Most of the, the village teams that I've refereed coming up through the ranks, likes of Bream, Lydney, Cinderford, yeah. Drybrook, um, all of those teams where like the local forest combination cup that would take place in April and May of each year. Um, <laughs> that, that definitely taught you a bit about rugby. So the Forest of Dean's pretty odd, uh, um, but I, I love it dearly. Um, and then, you know, you, you, get to, you get to go to some fantastic places which are a bit off the beaten track. So I was in Fiji this year. Yeah. My first uh, international was Fiji versus Samoa in Suva wow. back in 2006. And you, you, you get to see um, a side of a country, well, one you probably would never go to Fiji or yeah. Samoa. You know, it's probably not one of those countries because they're so quite difficult and so um, and accessible. Um, but to be able to have a good look around Fiji, that was special again. Samoa, really. In, um, remember Peter Fadayalofa? Fadi- yeah, passed away. Fats, yeah. Fats, um, um, what a legend. Well, he took me on what he called a tea tour, which um, was, uh, I thought we'd go around the island drinking cups Dodgy of tea. Link. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 not an Earl, Earl Grey in sight. Right. So he took me around about 15 different spots on a, like a minibus tour. Um Drinking. Uh, yeah, that is the wrong person to drink with. Yeah. You know, Jason Leonard, I realised um, this weekend, was not the right person. Uh, on Tuesday, don't try and drink with him. Don't tr- uh, try and drink with Peter Fato Lofa. Yeah. He wanted a game of squash in the morning. So he left me, like, like just f- threw me out of my hotel about nine o'clock at night and said, I'll see you for a game of squash <laughs> at 8 a.m. I'm like, <laughs> two hopes, mate. Good luck. Um, so um, that's what you get to see with rugby. Front row union yeah. at their strongest. Favourite band? Oh, see, I'm <laughs> I'm a bit sad. So, 1980s is my he- yeah. uh, is my era. We're right, we're right in the same sync with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so, I would probably put up there someone like um, I like a good sing along to like Wham or Spandau Ballet, something like that. Good, yeah. Pro- proper classic 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like someone gets a crowd going. Um, I also into my musicals. So oh, okay. Um, so when I drive home, quite often after a rugby match, Les Mis will be blaring out. <laughs> Um, if people if people drive by me <laughs> like l- looking that over social media content for the ages ex- exactly a bit of um, you know say. and uh, you know and ev- everything's a go to in Les Mis you know yeah. from on my own some proper uh, bangers in there yeah, yeah yeah so um you know what's an um 
What's Can name? you hear the people sing, oh. singing the song? <laughs> he wanted to be an actor. I have, this is the only reason I became a barrister was I wasn't good enough to become to an, an actor. actor. I'd have loved to have been a West End singer. Never say never. Yeah. It's yeah. Inter- actually it's quite funny. Um, as I woke up at the um, morning of my 100th game, um, Alfie Bow and... Um, Oh, I'm going to forget his name now. Who says Alfie Michael Ball. and Michael Ball were on yep. Saturday Kitchen? I thought this is meant to be. This is there meant to be. And then we went to the Millennium Stadium and they had a band singing all the classic hits from the musicals before the match. So they had a bit of um, Greatest Showman from, oh, from now on. Yeah. I thought, this this is my time. There you this go. This is my time. Amazing how the oh, world this works. is my moment. This is your yeah, yeah. Well, perfect moment, yeah. some yeah. might say. Alfie Bow lives next door to my parents in law. Oh, really? Curious world. Oh, I'd love to come around for dinner. Come Stroud. On, come and have a sing song, yeah. You say Stroud? Yeah. Oh, I didn't Chalford, realize. Chalford Hill. Oh, very nice. Very posh. There you go. Well, not, yes. Highs and lows. <laughs> um, come dine with me dinner. Start a main and pudding. I'm a vegetarian at home, oh, so Paul is veggie, so um, I wouldn't get away with uh, putting a steak um, right. out. So it Lots would of be some falafel. <laughs> Stereotyping yeah. vegetarians. Um, so it would be something very colourful, and Polly would tell me what I was cooking. So it would be something like maybe a nice risotto. Yes, to start like a risotto. Good. Yeah, it looks like you've you've worked hard at it. Yeah, it you does. just stand in there, just like, yes, yeah. um, lots of mixing. Um, um, and then oh, so we're on an Italian theme. So it would be something like. A spaghetti with some green things in it. Yeah, spaghetti and green things. Good. It sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and and a fruit based pudding. Um, oh, it'd be a tiramisu. Tiramisu. It? Tiramisu. Good. Homemade tiramisu. Delicious. Though. Form yeah. an orderly queue. Yeah. Uh, tipple of choice. <laughs> well, it's I'm seasonal. Right. So obviously summer West Country cider. Cider. Yeah. Um, it's just turned to Guinness season, isn't it? Yeah. So it would be um, Guinness. Like and then all red wine on a groany? Uh oh not on a groany. No? I'm not grown up enough for that. Okay. Um yeah, nice nice bottle of red wine. Yeah. Um um with my Italian dinner. <laughs> but we'd probably drink more white wine at home actually. Do you? Yeah. Like Even a, in the winter. Yeah, like but like a big punchy kind of I I'm sounding poncy now, aren't I? No. Uh, a big refereeing has changed yeah. you, but no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a big like um, I, I I can't keep just using the, the French kind of um, you know kind of Chardonnay. So a new world Chardonnay, a new like world a, new, Chardonnay. a New Zealand or an Australian big bold Chardonnay. That'll ingratiate you back to your friends yeah, down in the exactly. land of the long white cloud. And last but not least, hidden or secret talents other than uh, karaoke, musical sing-alongs. Oh um, yeah, I would I would have I would have put singing up there as my hidden talent. I used to I used to like a bit of Amdram. Did you? Uh, yeah, I used to I like uh, pantomime growing up as a in Bree Methodist Chapel. Right. I would. Um, I played. I played a dame once or twice. Right, right. <laughs> I think we were all, all good Amdrams have <laughs> exactly. in a large wig and something similar. Um, so yeah, I like a. I like a. I, I like a bit of um, Amdram, bit of singing. I would wouldn't you... say I'm talented, but I'm enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. Would you like to do a bit of media when the time comes? Um, I, I want my weekends back. There's one yep. thing I'm really looking forward to about when this all finishes is um, like players get it where they a player will know what their season looks like. Mm. So they know they're at home this weekend, they're away that weekend, they're in Europe that weekend and this is the, the tour that England are going on to New Zealand. I find out on a Monday where I'm going on the Saturday um, for the Premiership and I find out, like, I don't know where I am in Six Nations yet. Um, and why can they not put that in now? Um, it'll be things around form. It'll be things around, um, depending on what the game means. Um, you know, is it one versus three yeah. or is it you know twelve versus seven? So there's there's things like that. There's um, which which I do I do understand. Um, but you know, w- and as, as an example, we got back from um, Italy. Uh, sorry, Italy versus um, from New Zealand versus. Ireland um, on the Monday after the final test and we didn't know where we were going for rugby championships and it started through two weeks, three weeks later. So Carl Dixon and Luke Pierce had, I think, eight days at home and then we're away for another two weeks. And what I'm looking forward to um, when this all finishes is the certainty of being able to say to your mate, I'll come away with you that weekend yeah. or saying to my family, yeah, why don't we get together over Easter? Um, or saying, or Polly saying, 
can I have that weekend to go away with the girls? Yeah. That's a bit that people don't see behind the scenes. Neither should they. They shouldn't understand that. But so, yeah, I, I think doing something in, in the media um, would be great, particularly yeah. if it's a, a, a Monday afternoon um, in, in the Brixton area. You're always welcome. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the referee. <laughs> you know? um, so, but, but I'm not sure I want to go into every Saturday, yeah. you know, dip in, dip out. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, it's funny, and I would only compare, how old are you? You're 40, 43. 40, so with the same age, I'm just 40, uh, 42. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot more Botox going on this side of the fence. But what I would say is, as somebody who's gone from doing 42 weekends a year, as I was doing with Sky, yeah. to doing 10, yeah. they are happy days when you get it back. Yeah. You've got a lot to look forward yeah. to. The final thing which I've just remembered and I wanted to ask you is that we had Bob Skinstat on last week mm. who was talking about, we were talking about the Rassi experience. Yeah. And one of the things that he suggested, and I'd just love to get your 2P on it, is that actually referees should be part of an independent body, removed from world rugby, set up on their own and able to kind of conduct themselves and, and organize themselves, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously with input and feedback, et cetera. Yeah. But having referees within world rugby leads to these scenarios, uh, as we have done with South Africa. We were talking about the fact the narrative in amongst Springbok rugby is the world is against us type thing. Is, is that something that has ever been discussed, considered? Is there any validity to that? or is? Yeah, I, I listened, um, obviously, a regular listener, <laughs> good, bad and rugby. Um, Deep in the night when, you're, when you can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, on those long journeys yeah. home from sale. I know it well. Um, and um, so I was interested, so there's two points to it. We're not employed by World Rugby now, so okay. um, I'm employed by the Rugby Union, and what happens is World Rugby say, you're going to referee France versus New Zealand, yeah. and we just go and referee it. So, they were, so you're not employees of World Rugby? You no, so are a few. We, we kind of... Uh, um, it's not even subcontracted. There's an understanding that if they want Wayne Barnes for this game, they get them. And there has been quite a kind of regular discussion about whether we should follow something like the cricket model. Yeah. Um, the cricket model are all employed by the ICC. And then you had a, have a head of officiating who employs their, um, I think it's about a dozen international um, umpires, and then they go around and do the international game. So there's a discussion about whether that is the right route um, for for refereeing, um, I think as long as there's a reason why you you change uh, why it currently works, and that might be that, for example, I I am an advocate of it. I think that we should be employed by um, the international um, game by World Rugby because that means that I can experience Super Rugby. Um, ben O'Keefe can come up and referee Top Fourteen, the Premiership, um, the um, the URC because. They are. Um, people always have, have said that um, referee, uh, you you know, the referees from the Southern Hemisphere referee differently to the Northern Hemisphere. I don't buy into that. What we do, we referee different games. So right. when I referee the Bledisloe Cup, is a different game than refereeing Scotland versus France. In what way? Um, because of the way the game's played, it's more forward forward orientated. It's more scrum, more orientated up here, whereas it's more open, free flowing. Um, the, the breakdown is a kind of perhaps slightly um, slightly quicker. Um, I remember Spreader saying to me my first um, my first Bledisloe Cup and we're talking I don't know 10, 12 years ago just sit back and let it happen <laughs> um, and because that, and what he meant by it was they will referee the breakdown for you you don't have to overly get involved and I think my first Bledisloe Cup game there were about 13, 14 penalties because that, that definitely happened yeah. and that wasn't me refereeing in an English style that was me refereeing the game um, ahead um, in front of me so what I think would be would be interesting to explore is whether or not the top 10 top 12 referees in the world could then go across all the different competitions so the likes of you know the French team get to know the Kiwi referees a bit more and when I go down to Australia I know the Australian players a little bit more because I mentioned you know to Ben I think the best games are when the players and the refs interact well. There's that mutual trust. You only build mutual trust by, mm. by meeting people. You know, you don't build that over a Zoom call. Too true. So I, I think there is something to be exp explored around that about having a, a top-end group of match officials who are employed by the governing body, um, who are accountable to the governing body. But that still means that the review system um, has to be kind of bought into by everyone. So if it's 
I'm an in, I'm employed by the RFU or by World Rugby or by Bob's idea of an an independent kind of kind of tribunal which Bob is going to lead by the sounds well, of it. Well, maybe bringing you on board to head it up. <laughs> yeah, well, who there knows? You go. Um, um, but whatever's agreed, you know, around the review process, everyone has to buy into that yeah. because it's all good having these kind of um, systems and processes in place, but we have to buy into them. Did you play? Very badly, non-tackling back row. Were you? Yeah. Big ball carrier, or what was your what was your forte? Uh, um, getting rid of the ball very quickly. Rid, yeah. I was good in the line out see, because yeah. I'm six Light, foot three yeah. and lightish. Um, I played at that well-known um, rugby university of uh, Norwich. Did you? Yeah, I was, you know, I was speaking partridge to or not? Like <laughs> um, He was like it was a height of partridge, and we were up there, oh, so we loved it. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I quite went. a hotbed, Norwich. Uh, for what? Well, Young's brothers. Oh right, they, yeah, they Freddie were all up the road. So um, they were up there, were they? Yeah. North Orsham was was their club, right. um, and um, so I. What did you do in Norwich? Law, obviously. I'm a lawyer. Aren't well, I? yeah, but lots of people actually. My wife did English and then went to did a law conversion oh, did course. She? So oh. not a stupid question. Oh yeah. Um, I wish I hadn't done a law course. I wish I'd done something which you know I would have enjoyed a little bit more. But um, I wanted to get through quickly. So um, I, I did history of art. So of you're two you up did. on me. Oh, history <laughs> of art was really strong in Norwich. Was it? Yeah, it was um, like. I, I think one of the royals might have even went there to do it. Don't know which one that would be. Because it's a Sainsbury Centre. So I kind of <laughs> Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really odd kind of How rugby for... can take us on a, yeah. on a random path. Yeah. Um, the Sainsbury Centre, History of Art. Quite a few of my mates did it. You, right. could, you could tell the people who I hang around with. <laughs> Basically just colouring in. Yeah. It was, a, it was interesting. I, was, I played, I, what I do is I play on a, uh, on a Wednesday and referee on a Saturday during my time up there. Yeah. Um, and it when it when it got to the like kind of the, the decision time at do I carry on refereeing or do I play? Um, it was really quickly obvious which I was better at because most of my teammates told me it was time to retire. <laughs> they gave it's you only, a golden whistle. Yeah, that's only like twenty one. <laughs> like yeah, probably time for you to retire. Who first gave you the Who first gave you the whistle? Who, who did you first um, get asked to referee by? And so I got injured playing, and so a friend of my dad's was a was a ref, and my school teacher was a ref. So they said go along to. I actually just turned up at my local um, rugby club, Bream Thirds, and they said, "Oh, we haven't got a ref today. Can you referee?" So yeah. I ended up refereeing Bream Thirds versus Berry or Whoppers. Wow! Um, um, and and how then, good were you? Um, out of the like the thirty players and the one ref, I was probably in the top ten of referees <laughs> on the pitch. Um, but no, it's, you know, that's back to those odd places where you referee. Bream, um, it's lovely about Bream. Bream had two pitches built on a slope like that. Yeah. So they got the money to flatten one. So um, you would think that they'd flatten the top one. But no, they flattened the bottom one, so it just was constantly flooded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my rugby club. That's, yes, yeah. Put yeah. brains trust in short yeah. supply. Yeah. Well, from from heady days at the beginning, I think there are many people who will hope that there's a World Cup final for you should England obviously not do what England need to do. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Good oh, luck. Love you. to the family. Wayne Barnes, what a Thank start. You.